This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news financial markets on tenterhooks for the Thursday US Fed rate decision. In the meantime, US consumer inflation expectations over the next year eased in May down to 4.1% and the lowest since March 2021, more than two years ago. Expectations for inflation for longer term periods however rose slightly. The rises were minor, but represent an upturn from previous surveys. Labour market expectations were mixed, with expected earnings growth declining, but unemployment expectations and perceived job risks improving. This expectation data comes ahead of tonight's May CPI data for the US, and analysts also see it coming in at 4.1%, which will be a good drop from the 4.9% in April. And markets are expecting the Fed to pause its rate hike track when they deliver their latest decisions on Thursday, thinking they have inflation coming down quickly now and have done enough to keep the retreat locked in. The US government released its monthly budget statement for May, and this came in almost exactly as expected, but it is on track for a slightly larger deficit this year than last, this year about 8% of GDP. In China, there are more indications of their demographic malaise. The number of marriages registered last year fell for the ninth consecutive year to the lowest since 1986 when the figure started to be recorded. Only 6.8 million couples registered marriages in 2022, down more than 10% from the previous year and more than 50% lower than the peak of 13.5 million in 2013. And Japan's producer prices fell in May from April, only the third such drop in the past two years, and the steepest monthly drop since 2016, pandemic excluded. Japanese machine tool orders went flash in May, unfortunately, down 22% from the same month a year ago. Orders from both local and export sources were equally weak. And the Bank of Japan also updates its monetary policy this week on Friday. And India's CPI inflation rate rose slower and by 4.25% in May from 4.7% in the previous month, the lowest in two years and lower than market forecasts of 4.4%. Food prices eased the most, with most key categories falling rather sharply. April industrial production in India came in 4.2% above year-ago levels, but it was quite a fall-off from the strong March levels. The U.S. Treasury 10-year yield will start today at 3.75% and up 3 basis points from yesterday. And the price of gold will start today down $5 at $1,956 an ounce. And oil prices have fallen $3 from yesterday to be now just under $67.50 a barrel in the U.S., while the international Brent price is just under $72 a barrel. It's quite a sharp fall. And the Kiwi dollar starts today little changed at 61.2 US cents against the Aussie almost a half a cent lower from yesterday at 90.6 Australian cents. Against the euro was softer but less so at 56.9 euro cents. That all means our trade weight and index is now at 69.3 and actually little changed. And the Bitcoin price is again a little lower from this time yesterday at $25,807 down 0.7%. Volatility over the past 24 hours has remained modest at just on plus or minus 1.1%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow. Mm-hmm.